These students are working on an unsolved problem of mathematics from 1937. The problem is a perfect excuse to get your students enthusiastic about basic multiplication. We set it up through a scene from Greek mythology. King Minos has just imprisoned Daedalus and his son Icarus on a high tower. Daedalus was implicated in the murder by Theseus of the Minotaur, which happened to be uh, King Minos's son. So you can see why King Minos is so angry. Daedalus is an inventor, and so being imprisoned on a high tower gives him opportunity to exercise his brain. And he decides to go about trying to find a way to escape. And he comes upon the idea of gathering bird feathers and beeswax to fashion wings for his son and he to fly off the tower. So that's what this picture is about. On the night before the fateful flight, Icarus has a dream. He writes a number on a rock and he hurls the rock off the tower. If the number on the rock is even, then it's halved. If it's odd, then it's tripled and one is added. For example, we could start with three. Is three even or odd? It's odd. So we triple it, that's nine. Add one, that's ten. Ten, even or odd? It's even. So then we have it or divide it by two to get five. Five, even or odd? It's odd. So then we triple it, that's fifteen, plus one is sixteen. Sixteen, even or odd? It's even. So then we have to have it or divide it by two. Now your students might not know how to divide 16 by 2. And that's okay. They have to take a guess, for example 7, and then they use their multiplication skills to check their guess. Of course it's 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4, because it was even 2. And 4 is also even, so we're going to divide by 2 again to get 2, 1, and Icarus has crashed into the sea. He's dead. This has turned out to be a nightmare of a dream. But Icarus knows that if he can just find a number to write on that rock that doesn't end up at one, that doesn't end up with him crashing into the sea, that he's going to survive. Daedalus has a similar dream. So in his dream, there's only one difference, and that is that if the number is odd, then it's tripled and one is subtracted from the result. So for example, we start off with three. So is three odd or even? It's odd. Triple it, that's nine. Subtract one, that's eight. Eight is even, divided by two, four. Four is even again, divided by two, that's two, and one. Again, Daedalus is killed, he's crashed into the sea. How sad, but can he find a number to put on that rock so that he doesn't crash into the sea, so that he doesn't end up with one? So the task of your students is to save the lives of Icarus and Daedalus, to turn these nightmares of dreams into dreams with happy endings. The worksheet has got two sides. On one side you help Icarus, on the other side you help Daedalus. Uh, both have a sample that, you ha that the students have to do before they can experiment with other numbers. So with Icarus, they have to start with 7, and they have to experiment and see what happens to Icarus if he writes the number 7 on that rock that he hur hurls off. With Daedalus, they have to start with 15. So they experiment with 15 first of all, and again, this ends in disaster for Daedalus. Do you have to follow the same pattern? Uh, you, don't to pattern. you don't want to follow this pattern. You want to, because this killed him. You have to oh, choose yeah. something that doesn't kill him. Yeah, so choose, choose something that saves his life, doesn't kill him. Okay. Yeah. 
grade 4 students are capable of solving one of these two problems and repeatedly solve it in every class that I go into. Whereas the other problem has remained unsolved and the best minds have tackled it since 1937. It's amazing that just a switch from plus one to minus one makes that huge difference. And that's what makes this problem so beautiful. Which of these two people can get rescued easily? Daedalus. Daedalus has got many numbers that the children will stumble upon and then prove that they will never get to one. And how are they going to prove this? Well, they're going to prove it by finding a set of numbers that just repeats and repeats and repeats and will never get to one. So this is the most common cycle that they will discover. Another way to show this cycle is in this loop. So once you hit 20, you go to 10, 5, 14, 7, 20, 10, 5, 14, 7, 20, and you just keep on going round and round and round and round. You will never get to one, so Daedalus is safe. Rarely, you will have a student discover the other way that we know of to save Daedalus's life. And this is with this giant loop with 18 different numbers on it. What about Icarus? Can we save Icarus's life? Well, so far, every number that we've tried, and we've tried numbers up to a trillion, we have not found a single number that does not go to one. But that doesn't mean that there is not some number that goes round and round and round and doesn't get to one. So that's why this is an unsolved problem of mathematics. Icarus, we may be able to save his life, but we don't know that yet. Every time I present this problem, I end off with saying to the students, if you solve it, you get a million dollars. That's a lie. But the Pacific Institute for the Mathematical Sciences and Math Pickle are trying to establish a million dollar reward for 13 unsolved problems, one for each grade, K through 12. The prize money is to be split between the person who solves the problem and their most inspirational K through 12 teacher. This grade four problem is called the Kolatz conjecture after the mathematician Lothar Kolatz. Enjoy. So what have you managed to do? Save him. Save his life. Whose life? This guy's life. Daedalus. Yeah, Daedalus. the father. Okay. So do you think he's going to be a happy man? Yes. Okay, but have you saved his son's life? Not no, yet. Well, we, will. <laughs> we can just do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, okay, go ahead. Show me. I don't think it's going to work.